Hey guys, how's it going? Icy Cat here. And today I want to talk to you about some things that happened on the technical test server last week and some changes that might be coming to impact the meta of the game moving forward. Ubisoft is taking a real look at nerfing barbed wire and how it works in the game. But how will this shake things up? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Let's talk about that next. So last week in the technical test server, there were some interesting things that happened with changes that were revolving around the experimentation of making barbed wire a little bit more nerfed than it had been before. This is an interesting topic to be had because even though this occurred last week on the technical test server, and if you were part of that test server, you already know all about it. And if you follow the subreddit or the forums closely, you probably at least read about it or heard about it. But not everybody gets their information that way. Not everybody was able to participate in the test server. And discussing this within the community is still a relevant topic to pursue. Now, I didn't have actual access to the test server myself. The first two phases of the test server were for Western European people only. Then the third phase, they opened up to everybody that had purchased the game on Uplay for the PC, but I had purchased it on Steam, so I couldn't get in. But here's kind of what it was. So essentially, Barbed Wire takes two hits in the test server to destroy instead of three, and you have a faster movement speed through it. It doesn't slow you down as much. Reports seem to vary a little bit on how much this was, but about 30 to 40% faster than it used to be to be able to move through the barbed wire. And this is significant if you have people like Ash that are rushing and they're pushing in very quickly or an IQ, you know, any of these light speed operators. Now, if barbed wire doesn't slow them down as much, that could be significant. Also, barbed wire was kind of useful for when you might have somebody like a Montaigne move in where he was fully extended on his shield and there wasn't a whole lot he could do, but the barbed wire would at least slow him down a little bit and maybe allow people to kind of flank in behind him while he was struggling with that. If he can push through that faster now, that has some potentially large ramifications for the way the game gets played. Now, an important thing to note is the context of this. First of all, this comes from the test server, which means it's not something that's in the game yet. It isn't something that's even coming for sure. We just know it's something they're looking at doing. And in fact, the Rainbow Six community manager did post this in response to somebody that was talking about the changes that they were seeing. And what he said was regarding the barbed wire changes on the TTS, they're keeping an eye on it, but it's part of a larger metagame shift that they're looking at. It's important to note that you can't look at a single change in a vacuum and you must consider how else this will impact the meta. In addition to that, you wouldn't have all the information to make a proper assessment of how this could impact the game long term, such as other operator changes as well as a pair of new operators coming in the next season. Again, we're keeping an eye on how it all plays out and we're not opposed to reversing the change if it does not usher in the change that we are looking for. He further goes on to explain that they're seeing barbed wire as a must-pick secondary gadget. The pick rate was huge compared to other secondary gadgets, and they want to promote diverse gameplay, not a single tactic that everyone will just go with. And finally, he reinforces it by saying that it's worth noting that defenders have a higher win rate than attackers overall. It is certainly a valid point that he makes. We don't know the context of all this in the wider scope of the game. We're looking at these changes in the vacuum of one specific aspect of it, in the technical test server. This hasn't been deployed into the wild yet. We don't know what other things they're going to be balancing to pair with that. And even for sure, if they are going to, it was just a test. They were looking at it, seeing how it played. Now, I'm not here to say whether or not barbware needs to be nerfed or barbware should not be nerfed, but I think it's important to discuss it nonetheless as a community. What do we think about this? Well, one thing to keep in mind is he talks about how barbware is something that's used almost as like a must pick secondary gadget. Well, why might that be? There's a few reasons for it. It's incredibly useful. Not only can it be used to slow an attacker's push, but it can also be used as a sound cue when you hear that barbed wire being hit or being walked through. Even if you don't have line of sight on it, you know that there's somebody in it and you can like shoot through a wall and, or you know to get ready on a certain direction for that line of sight if they're about to step into something. There's just all kinds of usefulness there. And it is a passive device. You don't have to like remember to deploy it like with a nitro cell where you toss it and then you trigger it. You know, you just throw it out and it's there. It's you don't have to even think about it anymore, do anything with it. So it is just there providing passive assistance once it's been thrown out. But what's another reason that it's like a must pick secondary gadget? Well, I think one big thing that really lends to that is that out of the 15 defensive operators we have right now, 10 of them can take it. That's two thirds of all defensive operators can choose barbed wire. So it's commonly available, then that would mean that it could also be commonly selected out of the choices that any of those 10 operators might have. You only get two picks on your secondary gadget, and if 10 of them have it, it's just going to get picked a lot more. Let's take a look at what the other gadgets we're using are in relation to that. 
Deployable shields get picked sometimes, but they're not really used as much for a proper shield as they are so much for making a vaultable surface that you have to hop over, which creates an opportunity for them to be picked off as they do so, or maybe placing a trap on the other side of it. So it's not really being used in its shield capacity so much as it is creating like a vaultable obstacle to be dealt with. It can also be used to kind of get on top of other surfaces depending on the way that you place it, but these are somewhat situational uses. But then there's impact grenades. That's really useful for a roamer to have where they can, you know, make their own flanking routes to get out of areas where maybe they've gotten pinned down into a certain section or they can move between certain parts of the map very quickly. It also allows a defender to free up the ability to open up trap doors on their own without needing to take the shotgun and they can still have that submachine gun for higher accuracy but still be able to get through the trap doors. It can help a little bit against shields, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage to them. They have to be pretty injured already for it to be of any major use. And then you have nitro cells. Now, nitro cells were extremely popular at one time, and they've kind of waned off just a little bit because their big usefulness was that they were sort of the counter to shields. If you came in and you were fully extended behind your shield and you were safe behind that, somebody would toss a nitro cell at you and you were taken out of the equation and there was nothing to it. Well, now that shields have gotten their buff and you are actually safe from explosives in all areas covered by the shield, and if you're fully extended, that would be your entire body if you were that character. Now, they still get used in that way, for sure. They definitely do. They're also highly useful for modifying the layout of the levels. If you need to open up a wall and get through an area, maybe you need to, you know, open a wall between two bomb sites or whatever, or create some alternate lanes to be able to move through, they do certainly have their uses. But nitro cells aren't quite as powerful as they once were due to that shield buff. And as I said, if two-thirds of all defenders have the option for barbed wire, then it's going to come in handy in a lot of areas. But does that mean it needs to be nerfed? Well, another thing that they mentioned specifically was the role of other operators in the long term of the game, and it was specifically mentioned that there was a pair of operators coming out in the next season. Now, we do know that one of those operators is called Caltrip from the data mine files that somebody had gained access to. Caltrips are, of course, these small, sharp, pointy objects you scatter across a floor, and it creates something that's a barrier for people to walk across because it uh, they always land spike side up, and when they step on it, it causes a lot of pain, and it slows your movement if you want to pick through the area carefully without taking that injury. We don't know exactly if that's what this new character called Caltrip will be able to do or not, but if it is something even remotely like that, then there's a chance that having this work in a way that's somewhat similar to barbed wire might mean that if the barbed wire itself is reduced in its effectiveness, this operator can kind of pull up some of that gap again. Now, some people might think that that's lazy game design. If you're creating an operator that requires a nerf to an existing gadget to be able to accommodate, then not only is that a little bit on the lazy side, but it could also turn that operator into something of a must pick if you're looking for the effectiveness that barbed wire used to bring. To the people that do have that kind of an opinion, of course, that is complete conjecture at this point. We don't know the reasons behind the decision for nerfing the barbed wire. We don't even know for sure exactly how this Caltrop ability is going to work. We also saw in some files that were data mined that there are some other gadgets being introduced into the game, something specifically about landmines, toxic mines, some cluster toxic mines, some things like that. Now, some of these abilities may be tied to specific operators, or some of these abilities may be new secondary type gadgets. Reducing the effectiveness of barbed wire to a certain degree may be accommodating a balance that these new gadgets might introduce. However, it does bring up one other interesting point to consider, is that if the problem right now is that barbed wire is being overwhelmingly picked because it's so effective, but yet two-thirds of all operators have access to it, then by introducing new additional secondary gadgets, wouldn't you be diluting the pool of the amount of operators that would be able to pick it? In effect, wouldn't that help solve some of the problem? Of course, I can't restate enough that we just don't have the full context of what all of these things are. We just sort of have these clues, things that have been data mined, things that the community manager has said, things that were noted and tested during the technical test server phase. And when you put all of this together, there's an emerging picture of what the upcoming meta change might kind of start to look like. But we don't know all the decisions into the whys behind it or the, what the other balancing factors might wind up being. Overall, I reserve any judgment until like the final meta shift has been introduced into the game and we can see the way it all balances out, of course. But the community isn't always a fan of the kinds of meta shifts that we wind up seeing. And this thing is very much an ebb and a flow kind of effect. At one point, shotguns were very overpowered and then they were nerfed some of them almost to the point of ineffectiveness now, but at one point, Frost Shotgun was like the sniper shotgun and could kill people at ridiculous ranges. 
At one point, so many defenders had nitro cells that it was almost comical. And then we wound up getting a redistribution of who had nitro cells as well as a buff to the shield operators being protected from them. And so that wound up getting balanced out, but it was kind of like this ebb and flow in the meantime of how that worked. Then we wound up seeing some changes to Pulse as well as the introduction of Caveda, and then we had a heavy influx of roaming. Aggressive roaming kind of became the next new meta shift. So then in this last season, we got the introduction of Jackal, who was kind of an anti-roamer as well as things like Claymore Mines to kind of counteract the roaming. All the meta shift that occurs in the game is this constant ebb and flow to see how things work one way or the other. If it gets too much in one direction, they'll pull back and maybe try something else. And this is sort of like the next iteration of that. So what do you guys think about this? Is nerfing the barbed wire a good thing to do? What do you think they'll do to balance that out? Share with me in the comments down below or head on over to IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter and drop me a message there. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest news, information, tips, tricks, and more for Rainbow Six Siege. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.